Hi dear Africa Business Jumpstarters, this is Dr. Hanet, your Africa Business Trainer online and offline and today I'm reporting to you from Mombasa, Kenya. So before I dive into the opportunities that exist for you in Africa's food industry, not just here in Kenya but across the continent, I just want to quickly show you around because it's absolutely beautiful. Jumbo, jumbo buana, habarikani, nzuri sana. Wageni mwakaribishwa Kenya yetu hakuna matata A very nice mango again the melon so you just saw the hotel restaurant here and this is no small hotel this is a major luxurious five-star resort in Kenya so it's one of the biggest and one of the most popular in the country and therefore this restaurant serves hundreds if not thousands of people each week and month and I actually sat down with the restaurant manager, with the chef, to find out more about the food demand and what kind of products they are receiving locally here in Kenya and what kind of products they have to actually import. I am going to share, of course, what these products are, but I want to quickly explain to you the winning strategy here for you and your African business. As you know, um, I don't really want you to copy what everyone else is doing, but to find success strategies, winning strategies that position your business in a way that is different from most uh, businesses in, you know, in the same industry, so you can set yourself apart from the competition. So the winning strategy that I suggest and that I want to teach you is that you serve hotels and restaurants with your agricultural produce or with your food items that you may have processed. Now, that is a winning strategy because the majority of farmers don't do that. The majority of farmers, be it here in Kenya or anywhere else in Africa, because this strategy works across the, the continent, especially where you have a fast-growing industry in, in tourism. Um, that strategy will set you apart because local farmers at large are kind of, um, you know, they're producing traditional crops. And even young entrepreneurs who come in, for the most part, are also producing traditional crops. Now, when we look uh, at tourists and travelers, we can see that the demand of these people is different and that there are certain food items that they like, that they like to consume and that the restaurants and the hotels would like to offer. Now the challenge for the restaurants and the hotels is that these food items or that agricultural fresh produce is very often not available locally so they have to start to import. Now this is where you come in. You could do a survey in whatever country you are in Africa among hotels and restaurants and ask them, listen, what kind of products do you have easily access to locally and you never have a problem with supply and which kinds of, kind of products are actually short of supply so they may be produced locally but there's simply not enough of them or you actually have to import it because it's not being produced locally at all. Now, I hear some of you saying, oh, why should we start producing for tourists? You know, we should be producing for our own people because I had these kind of comments under similar YouTube videos I've done in the past. 
let me explain please it's very very important that we understand the wider context and not just make emotional assumptions first of all the tourism industry is a leading industry in Africa it is very very vital number one it is vital for foreign exchange currency exchange all right so when you produce local food and you only sell to locals well guess what the the people and the government are earning local currency and that is a challenge very often because with local currency you cannot powerfully make your position or trade in the world market um, and therefore every African country every every African government needs income in foreign currency that foreign currency strengthens the local economy and that foreign currency comes for example to a lot of countries through tourism and therefore tourism is an important part of Africa's economy at large. Now the second reason why tourism is so important is because it creates a lot of jobs for a lot of Africans. Um, as we know unemployment is a huge problem in the continent and job creation is so much needed. People need to feed their families. The tourism industry, the tourism sector at large across Africa produces ten thousand hundred thousands of these jobs and therefore just two reasons why the tourism industry is actually important and if we in Africa want to become competitive it is also important that we kind of provide the standards and the products that tourists would like to consume and therefore um, when we talk about a strategy that you produce for restaurants that you produce for hotels for the tourist industry and that you actually go out there and ask restaurant managers and hotel managers what their preferences are in terms of um, you know which products they can easily have access to locally which products exist locally but there's short um, supply and which products uh, are not available locally and they actually have to import this is very very vital information for you if you want to get started in uh, agriculture or in food processing okay and um, because it means it is a winning strategy because you are not producing simply what comes to your mind or you're not producing what everyone else is producing but you use a winning strategy which is to produce according to the demand in the local tourism industry. It's a very powerful strategy. Don't underestimate it because it will position you in very powerful ways. So let's come to the concrete products. So I sat down with the people here at the restaurant, the chef, the restaurant manager who know, and they gave me some insights. And they said, well, first of all, there is a trend and that trend is people want to eat healthier they want organic they want gluten-free they want dairy-free right so you have a, a huge trend happening here that trend is not just a trend among foreign um, tourists that come from outside of Africa but also among Africans it is a very visible trend and there's so many ways that you can come into this but going back to my chat with the restaurant manager so he said um, there are certain items that we have shortage of first of all you know foreign travelers also like fruits that are not local so usually what we get served is melon pineapple and mango and papaya and we get that served every day and ask me this is more than enough because this is from the backyard it's fresh it's organic it tastes so delicious but he said, well, there are also, item, um, there are also demands for other fruits, such as apples, for example, grapes. Uh, he mentioned apricots and prunes, and he actually said we're very interested also in dried apricots and dry, dried prunes. So the kind of uh, really uh, fruits and dried fruits that are also growing in demand in the West. 
So he said any kind of fruits that are not local, that are exotic for, for this kind of um, hotel resort, you know, this is something that they would love to have access to just to kind of mix up the experience um, for, for the guests here sometimes and to create new dishes. Um, the other thing that he mentioned was that uh, we have very easy access to herbs and um, so we don't really have a problem to get the herbs we need but there are challenges to get certain spices and he said um, so spices is a very very good you know business to get into there are shortage of certain spices locally and we actually need to import them and um, here specifically in Kenya you have a lot of uh, you have a large Indian community and yes restaurants and hotels also want to offer you know dishes um, to them and everyone else is enjoying these dishes too so again certain spices we cannot find so that is a gap uh, the other thing he mentioned is, well, we're coming back to my favorite products, strawberries and mushrooms. Strawberries and mushrooms. I'm saying this again and again because um, these are really products that I hear about all the time, talking to restaurant managers across the continent. Um, now, when it comes to strawberries, I asked, well, is there not local production here in Kenya? He says, yes, there is. But guess what? It is simply not enough. And we have shortage of strawberries and very often we actually import them. Now, he didn't know quite yet um, from which country they're importing, but I found that was quite um, extraordinary. They're importing strawberries. This is a fresh produce that can be so easily grown. And guess what? I heard the same from the um, investment officer in the Tanzania Investment Center. When I was in Dar es Salaam, she told me the same thing. We are importing strawberries for the tourism industry. And needless to say, Tanzania also has a very, very vibrant tourism industry. There's so many options here, but today I gave you one option and that is that you target your local tourism industry. And that means to go out there, speak to restaurant managers, speak to hotels and find out what is really needed. It is very simple to do that. You know, Africans are very approachable and when you knock the door and you say the right thing because you want to find out something uh, about their needs and how you can offer something to fill that gap, they would be very interested. Um, in talking to you. So this is it from me from Mombasa and I'll see you soon in my next video. If you're interested to explore um, Africa business opportunities or you want to find out more about our programs and how we help you to start your African business the right way, then hop over to my website africajumpstart.com. We have a lot of free resources there and also programs where I assist you personally to get yourself started. This is it from Dr. Harnett in Mombasa. Bye for now. Bye bye.